Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here again at the Dubliner pub. I'm here with Joe from Irish Abroad. You may know him from the Twitter account. Famous for uh, looking after all our players abroad. But uh, Joe, what do you think of that 2 0 victory? What are your thoughts overall? Uh, well, it was a 2 0 victory, and that's basically all you can say about it. Uh, it was a very hard watch, and I imagine it was probably even harder to play in. Um, Gibraltar came here. They didn't come to win, they didn't come to play football, they came to not lose, or at least if they were going to lose, to keep it respectable. Um, you know, there was It was just spoiler tactics, basically. They, they, didn't, they didn't try to close on any Ireland player that was on the ball. As soon as Ireland got possession, they had eight or nine players back into their pre-assigned positions in defence and midfield. There was no space for Ireland to move into, and, you know... As soon as the ball cleared, you know, back to the original positions and then try and break them down again and then repeat the fade, basically. Um, it was a very tough watch, a very tough watch. And I think the, the, the second goal at the end put a glass on it. But there's very little we can take from that. I think Robinson's performance was possibly the, the highlight of the game for me. He looked really good on that right wing, you know, coming off uh, coming off the right wing, trying to come into that channel inside the right channel to try and create something, to try and take a shot. He was he was working well with Coleman. I thought when he was cutting inside, he was allowing Coleman to go in on the overlap. Yeah, creating space as well. Um, you know, it's it's the kind of play that we haven't seen. You know, we've had a lot of wingers over the years. But we haven't really had someone who can come in, a dedicated player who can come in off that right side. I know Jonathan Walters had a lot of. Uh, success out there but he was always really a striker that was playing out right whereas Robinson that kind of looks like his natural position um, maybe he's put his hand up for uh, for the next two games in September you know we'll have to see what happens uh, when players come back from from summer from pre-season uh, pre training and how they, they're what kind of form they're in you know ahead of that those uh, that double header at the beginning of September um, but I just want to put the game behind me really and forget about it it was um, it's a horrible game of football to watch, and I think you know it's come on the back of some really good performances from from the under twenty one side, from the under seven under seventeen side when the European Championships was held here. Um, but it, they were playing against teams who wanted to play football, and I think this Ireland team can play good football against teams who want to play football. They just couldn't do it tonight. You know? Yeah, I, um, I I agree with you, but can you take any positives other than Callum Robinson? I mean, I know Matt Doherty was nowhere to be seen for this, you know, whole international break, completely like left out, and you got to feel sorry for him, like as well. Yeah, and I think he's not the only one. I mean, I wanted to see Josh Collins tonight just to, to see what he could do. I think it was a, an ideal game for Egan to come in and and show what he could do in a, in that centre defensive partnership, either with Cho or with Duffy. More than likely, will be with Duffy. Um, you'd have to think that you know it'll be Premier League football next uh, yeah. next season. So it's it will be harder to argue uh, to uh, Cho to start ahead of him. Um, you know, we didn't use all our substitutions. We had one left at the end, and I thought, you know, bring Colin on, give him two minutes at the end of a competitive game, and just something's at the back of my head, and I think it's going to be the back of back of it's going to be something we're going to apply to a lot of players who are dual or, or more qualified. You know, well, obviously the Declan Royce. Yeah, well. exactly. And I think uh, Daniel McDonald said at the time, this is going to be the legacy of De the real leg legacy of Declan Royce's Irish international career. You know, every player that's qualified for two for another country. Until they get that international competitive cap, the people are going to be asking the same question: Why isn't he playing for England or Poland or whatever other country he's qualified for? You know, we, you know, Collins had a really good season with Charlton. Just got promoted through the playoffs. He's going to be back at West Ham, and we don't know what's going to happen in in, in August and September before the the double header. If he plays well, if he gets into the team. Are people going to be asking the same questions you asked about Rice? Why isn't he in the England team? And we had an opportunity tonight to, to you know, just to end those questions before they were even, you know, they're even begun. Um, I think that's probably the biggest disappointment for me. Um, I mean, talk about the performance, talk about the, you know, the lack of creativity, you know, even the lack of goals. But um, I think we're going to have to be cynical about these things in future. Um, We've seen Wales uh, cap players at 16 and 17 if they think there's any possibility that they're going to declare for another country. And I don't like to see it, but probably we are going. To, that is going to happen to uh, uh, an Ireland manager. An Irish manager is going to have to make that decision in the very near future. Absolutely. Well, just uh, to finish up, with, is there anything we can take positively uh, going now into the Switzerland game? Well, we're top of the group. We're unbeaten. Um, 
the other teams are playing catch up on us. Uh, we still have Denmark have to come here and get a result now. I know they got a, a really good result tonight after uh, after only drawing with us on on Friday, um, but they have to come to Aviva Stadium and get a result. Switzerland have to come here and get a result. Uh, so. I still favour us to get uh, to, to qualify for the championships next year, um, but there's you know our our only remaining easy game is Georgia away. You know we've got we've to play Switzerland twice and Denmark at home. Uh, both of those sides get to play Gibraltar twice, and you'd expect them to come away with six points uh, both times. So it's we're we're facing into the harder side of the, the qualifying series. I'm not really sure Testing how prepared. Times ahead. Yeah, I'm not really sure how prepared we are for that just yet. Um, but you know, like I said, we. Uh, I think the the fact that we've got Denmark at home is slightly putting slightly in our favour. We don't, have, as in, we don't have to go to Denmark and get a result. They have to come here and get a result. Oh, Joe, well, as always, I really appreciate your time and no thanks for for your insight there. Uh, if you like this video. Well, drop a like on the video and uh, as always don't forget to subscribe thanks very much for watching I'm going to speak to you soon right.